Welcome, brothers and sisters, to day four of this time of refreshing. And today, our focus is refreshed by the Holy Spirit. Refreshed by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Let us take our opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. We praise you. We thank you so much for this opportunity you have given to us to come together upon this platform. Thank you, Lord, to come into your presence, to fellowship together with you, Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and with one another. Heavenly Father, we hand over this meeting to you. We ask, Lord God Almighty, that you take absolute control, you lead us by your spirit. We yield all to you, our God, and we ask that at the end of this meeting, you will take glory unto yourself, and you will indeed bless us. Thank you, our God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Oh, I, I trust God that you have been praying using the prayer guide. And today our focus is on the Holy Spirit, refreshed by the Holy Spirit. To be refreshed, for you to be refreshed, be renewed, for me to be refreshed, to be renewed, for us to be refreshed and be renewed by the Holy Spirit of God. This is very important, brothers and sisters, and we will just look at a number of scriptures and then we will go on to pray. I believe you have read the scriptures that we shared. But let's start today by reminding us of a very simple message that the Almighty God helped uh, uh, me to put together, which I've been sharing in the book we call or title, Who is a Christian? Who is a Christian? I don't know if you keep reading this book, but personally, every time I keep reading this book, I read it quite often, um, not as often as I ought to, but I do try to read it. And when I read it, it just looks like I have not read it before, as if it is totally new. And that's how it is when the Spirit of God inspires um, something, inspires a message, inspires a word. So I want you to, if you have your copy, you can open to page eight, but if you don't have, I'll just read it. In page eight, we said, so to be a Christian is simple because God already made the provision for all as follows. Number one, you believe Jesus Christ, the son of God died for your sins. Number two, you must repent and forsake all sins. Ask God for forgiveness of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Some people say you must confess your sin. Uh, but this statement really, that's what confession means. Yeah. So yes, confess your sins, repent, confess and forsake all sins and ask God to forgive for forgiveness. Number three, you must ask God to give you the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. That's where we're going to. You must ask God to give you the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and receive him, the Holy Spirit, by faith. According to Luke chapter 11, verse 13, there the Bible says that if you, being evil, ordinary human beings, you can give good gifts to your children who ask of you how much more is your heavenly Father willing to give the Holy Spirit to those who ask of him. Now, let me make a key point here. See, Holy Spirit or receiving the Holy Spirit is not by feeling. Just like any other thing, any other blessing, any other provision and promise of God is not by feeling. Hello, the Holy Spirit is received 
by faith from God. It's by faith in God, rather, and is received from God by asking God. So I read that point again. You must ask God to give you the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus and receive him, the Holy Spirit, by faith, not by feeling. Yes, when the Spirit of God dwells in you, often he will give you sensation, especially the unction to speak in tongues, the ability to speak in tongues, teaching you a lot of things, teaching me, teaching us a lot of things, but it is not by senses. It is by faith in God who is faithful to do as he has spoken according to his word in the name of Jesus. That's it. So we must ask God and believe what God has said in his word is true. And so Jesus Christ has spoken to us here in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. And I would also like us to read uh, um, John, John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, just to remind ourselves again, whatever God has promised is true and God will do as he has said. John chapter 7, from verse 37, he said, on the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart, some translations said out, out of his belly, will flow rivers of living water, will flow. So this number one thing you see is that if anyone thirsts, so thirsts, anytime there is a thirst, you come to him and drink. And he said, out of your heart, out of your belly, out of my heart, out of our belly, the center of our being, we have flowed rivers of living water. Verse 39, but this is spoke concerning the, the spirit whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was not yet glorified. And Jesus, before he departed, after he had been glorified, told his disciples, wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Father. And on the day that we call the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit came in fulfillment of the prophecy that prophet Joel gave. And that Holy Spirit has been here with us. You know, like the song that uh, we sing. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Lord. You know, there is a version that some people say, I know you came from heaven above. The Holy Spirit is on the throne. No, the Holy Spirit is the one that is here with us. Jesus Christ resurrected and ascended and he's seated on the throne with the Father God Almighty. Hallelujah. You can see that in Revelation chapter 3 and plenty other places. Now, but he, the Father, has sent the Holy Spirit to us through him, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And so Jesus here said, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, will receive the Holy Spirit. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? That's the point that this book has made. Now I move on because it's important for us to, be, to remind ourselves Having prayed this prayer, you have received the Holy Spirit. How do you then continually renew yourself in the Holy Ghost? That's what we're talking about. That's where we are here. So whether you are new or you have received, you are. This meeting, this moment, this time is for you. It is for me, as we would also see in the scripture. So I just read the point four and five, and then we'll go to Jude. So um, that was point three, point four. You must believe God and his words that you have now received the Holy Spirit. 
and have become a son or daughter of God, therefore have become a Christian. Because it's only those who have come to Jesus Christ, believe in Christ, and through Jesus Christ have received the Holy Spirit, are Christians. That's the mark of a Christian, transformed by the Holy Spirit of God. Then point five, this is what I want us to pay attention to today. Five, you must now live by faith and love and allow the Holy Spirit manifest the life of God in you, just like he did in Jesus Christ. You must, allow, you must now live by faith and love. Our life as a Christian must and is always by faith and love. And allow the Holy Spirit manifest the life of God in you. What do we mean by allow? Give him the space, the time, like we are doing now. The time in prayer, the time to just meditate, the time to just commune with him. The Holy Spirit that has been given to you, given to me, given to us to lead us. So I take that point again straight to the end. He said, you must now live by faith and love and allow the Holy Spirit manifest the life of God in you, just like he did in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will manifest gifts. That is power of God, fruit. That is righteousness of God, ministry. That is acceptable services to God and fellowship. That is communion with God, personal fellowship, communion, relationship with God in you. Glory be to God. This is, so you need to continually remind yourself of this. Let's look at Jude, Jude verse 20. You know, Jude has only one chapter as the scripture of our reference, Jude. Verse 20, continue with this. Haven't prayed and received the Holy Spirit. How do you continue to fellowship and be renewed and be refreshed by the Spirit of God? Jude 20, verse 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in the Holy Spirit, have you been baptized in the Holy Spirit with manifest signs of uh, grace and ability to speak in tongues? Go ahead when you pray, pray in tongues. If you have not, it doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit. Continue to seek, desire it, and yield yourself to the Holy Spirit. And continually pray in the Holy Spirit. How do you do that? Consciously knowing that you have the Spirit of God, ask the Spirit to help you when you pray. Pay attention. Those uh, 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 ministration, at times it comes like a light inside of you and you just know that the Spirit of God is speaking to you, that you pray according to the leading, the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Yield and give the Holy Spirit the space. So it says praying, in the Holy Spirit. If I know that may not satisfy some people. So go with me to Romans chapter 8 again and remind ourselves what the Bible says. It says in um, verse 9, it says, But you are not, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Did you see that it said you are in the spirit? How are you in the spirit if the spirit of God dwells in you? That's it. Just again to balance the point I made earlier about praying in the Holy Spirit, because some people's would say it is strictly when you're speaking in tongues. It is your 
being led by the Spirit of God in the way you know and consciously follow the Spirit's leading. That's it, what it is. But I encourage you, don't stop there, please. It's important for you to continue to develop in the Spirit and be able to speak in tongues. It makes it much easier for you to very simply just switch. Because he who speaks in tongues, not the one of your, the one I, 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 I force by myself. I mean, the one that the Spirit has given me the enablement is simply yielding to the Holy Spirit. It is a way of yielding to the Holy Spirit. So I believe you have seen it there clearly written in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 9. That you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. But at times we would think to be in the spirit is to dream in the spirit. It's simply to yield and be led by the spirit of God. You are consciously, you know, and you know, and you know, and you consciously yield to the spirit. And the spirit leads you, and you know the spirit is leading you. That's how to be in the spirit. It is by the word of God. And as I've said, it's easier when you have allowed yourself and allow the spirit to uh, uh, manifest himself with the grace and gift of speaking in tongues and you are able to use that and switch easily. If you read this what I say, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. Ten, and if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. Eleven, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Uh, the King James Version says, will also quicken, quicken your mortal body. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Verse 14, 14 says, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are sons of God. Just what I had said earlier, what it means to be in the spirit is to be led by the spirit. And those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons and daughters of God. 15, he said, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Glory be to God. So, the Spirit of God in you manifests himself, gives you the power, gives you the grace, gives you the strength, gives me, gives us. The enablement quickens us, produces life in us, as Romans chapter 8 verse 11 there says, in the Spirit of God, the Spirit of him that raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in you. He that raised Christ from the dead is able to quicken your mortal bodies, is able to give life to your mortal bodies, to our mortal bodies by his spirit who dwells in, in us. He, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies, give life to our mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you, who dwells in us. So the spirit gives us the enablement, manifest in us the power of God, which is the gift of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, which is the righteousness by the Holy Spirit of God, ministry, which is acceptable services to God, and fellowship, communion, 
personal relationship, like you heard there, he said the spirit cries out, Abba, Father. The spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, sons and daughters of God. No doubt, no iota of doubt. So, we'll continue to read and then we will pray. Want to further read First Corinthians, First Corinthians chapter 11. Again, the gift of the Holy Spirit is discussed there. First Corinthians chapter 12, uh, rather, <laughs> sorry, First Corinthians chapter 12. Let's read it one, we'll just read one to 11. Yeah, I, I believe you have studied it because this was given for us to study. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that you were gen Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. So Paul here was speaking to the Corinthians who were Gentiles. Three, say, therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I've explained this in the past to us. I said, so some people would say, I don't know what I'm speaking. This tongue, I don't know what I'm speaking. So Paul here was saying, if you're speaking by the Spirit, whether you know it, you don't know it, you cannot say something that is wrong. So when you're speaking by the Spirit of God, relax, release yourself to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can only say good things, can only minister good things, and say good things about Jesus. Amen. And he says, no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Of course, somebody can pretend and just say Jesus is Lord. But he's saying that that is only acceptable if it comes by the revelation of the Spirit of God. You see how deep it is for us that we, our base is the Holy Spirit. Four. There is nothing we do, brothers and sisters, if it is not by the Spirit of God, it's just by the flesh. So we'll read for. He said, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Take note of that. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries. Note the word ministries again here, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities. So you have seen gifts. Serv um, 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 ministries, which are services and activities, the actions that we take in delivering these activities. So tie those three together. Gifts of the Holy Spirit given to us, services, ministries that we fulfill, and activities that we do in order to fulfill the services that we render to the glory of God. He said, and there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. Seven, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. We have to remind ourselves and continually develop by the spirit. So number one is what? The word of wisdom. For to one, verse eight, for to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit. To another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healings by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. 11, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So there is no limitation, it's the spirit that manifests and he can manifest all this. 
in you in different ways, in different forms, at different times, he will manifest the gift. Let's look at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 31, and then we'll start praying. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. The, the scriptures we're going to read after this, we'll just read it and then we'll be praying. Glory be to God. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. Are you there with me? Let's read it together. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Remember here that the apostles were already filled with the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, they were baptized in the Holy Spirit, and they were speaking with in, in, the, in, new, in the new tongues, with new tongues. In fact, between there and this place, you would have seen several references, I mean, at least two references, where the Bible says, and they were few with the Holy Spirit. For example, if we look at Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 3, uh, remember, in fact, in this same act, chapter 2, uh, Peter rose up and answered them, okay? Now, in Acts chapter uh, 4, let's, let's just look at Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 8. It says, then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers of the people and elders of Israel. So here in Acts chapter 4, verse uh, 31, they were praying, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So what is the simple message, brothers and sisters? We need to constantly renew ourselves in the Holy Spirit, just like Jude 1 there, uh, 20 says, and ye beloved. Build up yourself in the Holy Spirit. Build up yourself in the faith. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. We want to pray. I believe the living water is in you, is in me. If you haven't asked God prior to now, it's time to ask. And he will just continue to flow continually, continually to flow. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Lift your voices with me to heaven and let us thank God. Tell him our Father in heaven, I thank you so much for your faithfulness, for your love, and your provisions for me and my family. Thank you, Almighty God, for your faithfulness, for your love, and your provisions for me and my family. Tell him, Heavenly Father, thank you for all your blessings to me, all your blessings to me and my family and your people, your children, all over the world, and indeed to the nations, you have been good. Your blessings to me, to my family, and the people, the tongues, the tribes, the nations. Thank you, Almighty God, for your blessings. Now go ahead and tell you, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time of refreshing program. And for days one and two and three, for days one, two, and three, thank you, Almighty God, for what you have done. We thank you. Let's open our mouth and really thank him. Go ahead and give him your thanks. Give him your thanks. Lord, I thank you so much for what you have done in day one, for what you have done in day two, for what you have done in day three, 
Father, thank you for this day four. Thank you for what you're doing uh, right now. And thank you for what you have ordained to do today. Lord, I thank you. To you, almighty God, be all glory in the name of Jesus. Let's thank you again and say, Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. Thank you, almighty God, for your word that you have spoken to us today and for the promise to give us your Holy Spirit, your promise to give us your Holy Spirit, to renew us by your spirit, Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Almighty God. To you be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want us to um, read Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 32, verse 15. Read it with me. It says, until the spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and a fruitful field is counted as a forest. Let's turn that to prayer and pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, the God of new beginning, pour out your spirit upon me, pour out your Holy Spirit upon me afresh, and renew me, O oh God, pour out your spirit upon me afresh, and renew me, O oh God of new beginning. Pour out your spirit upon me. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon me afresh and renew me and renew me by your spirit, almighty God. Let whatever in my life was like a wilderness become fruitful, like a fruitful field. And that which was already fruitful, O God Almighty, greatly enlarged and increased like a forest. Father, pour out your spirit upon me afresh and renew me, renew me, renew me by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Open your mouth again and pray and say, Oh God of new beginning, quicken me by your Spirit and cause me to know and do your will. Father God, quicken me by your Spirit and cause me to know and do your will. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, God of new beginning, quicken me by your spirit. Quicken me by your Holy Spirit, almighty God, and cause me to know your will and to do your will. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pray it. Pray it for yourself. And now I want you to make it specific. What is that thing in, the, in your own life that you have been asking God? Show me. Show me. Give me answer. Go ahead and Pray right now and tell him, Almighty God, in this matter, reveal your will to me. In this matter, Lord, reveal your will. Let me know your will. By your spirit, Lord, reveal your will to me. Reveal your will to me in this specific matter. Let me know your will. By your spirit, speak to me, Lord. Speak to me, speak to me and guide me, guide me. In the name of Jesus. So let's pray that prayer again together. Say, Heavenly Father, we pray together in agreement. And we ask Almighty God, the God of new beginning, quicken me, quicken us, every one of us, by your spirit, and cause us to know your will and to do your will, specifically in our lives, in our lives, in the name of Jesus. Remember, Lord, uh, brethren, what we share, that the Holy Spirit will manifest gifts, power in you, man manifest fruit, and manifest the accept ministry, acceptable services, and also manifests in you the communion, communion, fellowship, personal fellowship with God. And so go ahead and pray. Quicken me, quicken me, quicken me. Quicken me, whatever in my life has been dull, Lord. Now I need your quickening. I need your quickening. I need your quickening. I need your quickening. Quicken me, Almighty God, by your Spirit. Quicken me afresh. Quicken me anew and cause me to know and do your will. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Go ahead and pray again and say, Oh God of new beginning. Enlarge my service and ministry 
and manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit in me. O God of new beginning, enlarge my service and ministry and manifest the gifts of the Holy Spirit in me. And pray, say, in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit of God, manifest the gift of word of wisdom, the gift of word of knowledge, the gifts of healings, the gift of uh, uh, faith, the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues, the gift of discerning of spirits, manifest your gifts in me, Holy Spirit of God, the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Now let's read Exodus chapter 24, verse 17. Exodus 24, verse 17. And we'll pray the next prayer. It says, the sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. The sight of the glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire. That's the kind of glory you are carrying, brothers and sisters, if the Holy Spirit of God dwells in you. That's the kind of glory, that's the kind of power that we are carrying. The glory of the Lord was like a consuming fire, like a consuming fire on the top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. Oh, your eye, I, if your eyes were to be opened, to see what is with you. Ah, brothers and sisters, I believe we will do better than we are doing. And I pray that the Almighty God will open our eyes of understanding and to see and to know His glory by His Spirit that is upon us, that is in us, in the name of Jesus. Open with me to First Corinthians chapter 3. And let's just read that before we take the next prayer. Sorry, Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Let's start reading from verse 7. So you see that same glory that the children of Israel, it was like a consuming fire in them or in their eyes. Hear what the Bible says. It says, but if the ministry, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 7, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away, how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious. Nine, for if the ministry of condemnation had glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels. Beloved brothers and sisters, we are carrying the glory that excels, the glory that excels. That's the glory we're talking about. In Hebrews chapter 12, if you start reading from verse 22, uh, in fact, from verse 18 to verse 24 and then verse 29, you see this comparison of this glory again. But let's just look at verse 29. It says, for our God is a consuming fire. That's the glory that we are carrying. Raise your voice to heaven now and pray with me and say, Almighty God, O God of the new beginning, send us revival by fire. Renew your spirit within us. Let your consuming fire, let your consuming fire Burn in me, burn in me, burn in me. That glory, that glory, that glory like a consuming fire, 
Let it burn in me, O oh God. Let it burn in me. And let your fire revive me, revive me, revive me, revive me in the name of Jesus Christ. O oh God of new beginning, send me your revival. Send my brothers, my sisters, your revival. Send us your revival. Send your revival by fire in the name of Jesus Christ. Let your fire burn in me. Let your fire like a consume, your consuming fire, your glory like a consuming fire by your spirit manifest in me. Manifest in me. Let your gifts, the gift of the Holy Spirit, manifest in me. Let the fruit of the Holy Spirit manifest in me. Let the services, the enablement, the gifts, everything of the Holy Spirit manifest in me. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Father God, send us your revival by your spirit. Send us your revival by fire of the Holy Spirit. Let your spirit burn in me like a consuming fire. Oh God, let your spirit burn in me. Cover me with your spirit and your glory like the consuming fire. For my God is a consuming fire. Manifest your glory, your power in me like a consuming fire. Let your fire burn. Let your fire quicken me, quicken us. Let your fire revive us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And we pray, O oh God Almighty, pour your spirit Upon Lord God Almighty, your children, pour your spirit upon our nation and let your spirit, God Almighty, burn like fire, burn like fire. Let there be revival, revival by fire, revival of your righteousness, revival, revival, revival of your work, revival of your good, good work, revival of your righteousness in our lives, in our families. In our land, in our nation, let there be revival by fire, by fire, in the name of Jesus Christ. Go ahead and pray, brothers and sisters. Pray. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you are not sure you have received the Holy Spirit, and you're still wondering, just go ahead and tell him, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. You are the one who baptizes with the Holy Ghost and fire. I surrender my life to you. I repent of my sins. I forsake all my sins. And I ask Almighty God, please forgive me. Forgive me, wash me, cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. And now, Lord, I yield my life to you. Pour your spirit upon me afresh. Pour your spirit upon me. Give me your Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit of God. Guide me now. Burn in me. Burn like you're burning in the other brothers and sisters. Burn in me also, Holy Spirit of God. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray for yourself. Burn in me, Holy Spirit of God, like a consuming fire. For my God is a consuming fire. Let the glory of God, like the consuming fire, manifest in me, manifest in you, manifest in us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Finally, want to pray again. According to uh, the first Corinthians that I talked about, uh, I mentioned earlier, chapter 3, verse 16. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. It says, Do you not know 
that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? Glory be to God. We are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwells in us. And so raise your voice with me to heaven and pray as a heavenly father, I thank you for giving me your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And now I yield my body to you, Holy Spirit of God. I am your temple. Feel this temple afresh. Feel this temple anew. Feel this temple. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so I yield my body, my soul, my spirit, everything I submit to you, Holy Spirit, take over me now. Take over every part of me. Take over everything in me, Holy Spirit. The consuming fire I hand over to you. Take over. Take over. My body is your temple. You own this body, Holy Spirit, so I yield it to you right now, right now. Take over, take over, take over, and manifest the glory of God in the name of Jesus. Manifest the glory and the power of God in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God, as it is written, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So anoint me now, Holy Spirit of God. Holy Spirit of God, I yield to you. Manifest yourself in me. Manifest your gifts, your power, the power of God. Manifest the glory, the glory of God. Manifest the ability, the enablement of God in me. And use me, use me, use me. Now go ahead, use me to do the work of God, the work of Christ. Use me, use me, use me, use me, use me, use me to heal the sick with your gifts of healing, to cast out devils with your anointing and power, Use me, use me, use me, use me, use me to do the work of God and glorify Jesus and glorify the Father. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now take one minute and pray your own specific prayer. Pray your own specific prayer, brothers and sisters. Oh, it is not by might. It is not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The Holy Spirit is our operational base, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Let's bring our prayer to a close in Jesus' mighty name. Before we round up, I want us to pray this prayer again. Tell him and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving me your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And Lord Jesus Christ, the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire, thank you for obtaining for me the Spirit the Holy Spirit and pouring upon me as you pour upon the disciples of old, the apostles of the first century. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And now I ask, Holy Spirit of God, open my eyes to see. <laughs> open my ears to hear. I need to hear you. I need to hear Jesus. I need to hear God. And open my understanding. Give me the revelation of the word of God. The revelation knowledge. Give me the revelation knowledge of the things of God. 
open my mind to perceive, to receive, to discern, to understand the things of God. Feel me, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want to agree with you, brothers and sisters. If you have been praying this prayer, that the spirit transformation will take place in your life. And you will know it and know it and know it. As the Bible says, the spirit bears witness with our spirit. There is absolutely no doubt. Romans chapter 8, verse 16. The spirit bear himself, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. I want to agree with you. If you have prayed this prayer, that we have prayed. I want us to agree together. Let us pray in agreement. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for hearing and answering all our prayers. And now, Lord, I agree with my brothers and sisters, and we all agree together that the time of refreshing by your spirit come upon every one of us now. As we have asked, as we have prayed, almighty God, let your spirit burn in us like a consuming fire. Let your spirit burn whatever is not of God out of our lives. And let the Holy Spirit grace and manifestation take over our lives now. Let the gifts of the Holy Spirit manifest in us now unlimited. In an unlimited way, without struggle. When we open our mouth to pray for the sick, let the sick be healed instantly. When we open our mouth to ask for anything, let the miracles take place by your Spirit's gift in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, thank you for doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we have asked and all that we could even desire or think. And now, Lord, we agree, do according to your will according to your mighty power in our lives. And Father God, take glory today and for the rest of our lives. Let our lives please you and glorify you. Let our lives please our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we will do the work of God that you have called us and have sent us to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. The Almighty God bless you, brothers and sisters. Go on and exercise the gift of the Holy Spirit that is upon you, that is upon me, that is upon us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This is where we'll close. But before we leave, let's just make some announcement. Again, our focus for tomorrow will be exercising my faith. Exercising my faith. And the focus is healing, deliverance, administration healing, deliverance, administration. So now you have been filled, renewed, refreshed with the Holy Spirit. So tomorrow is the time we will come. Um, day six, which is Saturday, our focus will be in the beginning, it was not so. In the beginning, it was not so. These two days, we are going to match the operation together.
So what you're going to do is look at the 13 points of new beginning blessing that we noted and put down again for your own self. Any deviation, any area that has not been fulfilled in your life, note it down. And tomorrow bring it and you will be the one ministering to yourself. But of course, we will be ministering together to ourselves. Are you sick? The gift of healing is available. The spirit of God has been given to us to profit every one of us, to the benefit of all of us. So as we pray, the sick will be healed in the name of Jesus. Jesus has already done it for us. He wants us to exercise our faith. So that's um, how we will run, just again to prepare us ahead. Tomorrow is day five and Saturday is day six. We will emphasize again um, tomorrow the details of day six. Let us pray to finally close. Join me to thank God for the grace and strength he has given us to wait upon him uh, this past four days. Oh, the strength of the Lord has really been great. The grace of God has been upon us. Let's thank him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the, your spirit's grace and strength that you have given unto us to wait upon you this past four days. Lord, we thank you again for the success of today. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done. We thank you for pouring your spirit upon us afresh and new. We thank you for your glory upon our lives. We thank you for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done. We say to you, our God, be all glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we hand over day five and the remaining days of this program to you. We ask, Lord, go ahead of us. Prepare the meeting for us. Let it be far greater than we have had today. All to the glory of your name and the name of Jesus. And Father, tomorrow is so special. So we'll pray that you will draw your children all over the world, as many as you have ordained to be blessed. Draw them to this program and bless them indeed in the name of Jesus Christ. And now, Lord, as we break the fast and we're going to eat, we pray that you anoint the food we're going to eat. Let us eat blessings, eat health into our bodies in the name of Jesus. And now we ask that you will uh, renew us, renew our strength, that by the strength of this food we're going to eat, we will go through this entire program successfully. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. To you be all glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me shall follow you, shall follow every one of us all the days of our lives. In the name of Jesus and the Holy Spirit of God, in Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye and God bless you.